Hi friends, welcome to prayer for the, for the nation, for our nation, yes, our nation of Trinidad and Tobago. We are praying for this nation because we understand what we are up against and we understand the power of prayer, the power of agreement. Praying for you, of course, because you are part of this nation, families in Trinidad and Tobago, wherever you are, in Cedrus, in Carcass, wherever you are, Princess Town, Port of Spain area, the East West Corridor, Lavantel Morva, wherever you are, of course, in Toko, even in San Grande. Chaguana, San Fernando, Port of Spain, wherever you are, Tobago, Scarborough, we thank God for the opportunity that we can stand in prayer with you for your breakthrough, for your miracle. That is why we ask you every morning to call the numbers on the screen so you can, of course, send in your prayer requests. We want you to uh, send it in so we can pray with you and pray for you and know one thing that we have those prayer requests on our database, that those prayers will go up ever so often. We will be reminding God of what we have been asking him for. So thank you again for all your phone calls and continue praying for us because we need the prayers. It's like, oh, you need me to pray for you. We need you to pray for us also. So the Lord keep you and the Lord continue to strengthen your faith day to day. This morning, I had the privilege again of having with me, of course, uh, Sue Thurston. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Sue. It's nice to have you again with us, of course. Sue is an international messenger, uh, preaching the gospel through the length and breadth of the world. Um, Second home is China. I think I mentioned that the last day. <laughs> so should give us a little more update again. Uh, so I know that, that you have been here for a few days now and you have been enjoying, of course, um, our country, but more than that, you have been enjoying ministry. Amen. That's my passion. I know. You yes. have been preaching, uh, yes. so, to, so many churches, and, uh, and of course, you have been here in Trinidad. You have been coming to Trinidad for the past 10 years? Eight years here physically, okay. 10 years prior spiritually. Spiritually. So we thank you again for your prayers and for your support here for our country. Uh, one of the things that we want to talk about this morning, of course, is our children. Um, parents are in trouble. Uh, they have been calling us. Uh, Pastor, can you pray for my son or pray for my daughter? We understand, of course, they are living in the age of technology. So, you know, so, so, so of course, knowledge has increased. Right. And you know with knowledge, much sorrow has increased. Yes. But I want to encourage the parents this morning and, of course, grandparents. Um, don't give up on their children. I want them to stand strong. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 127, it says, Low children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Children, how important is for us to stand in the gap of our children? Very important. You know, it said there's no one that can pray like a mom can pray for that child. Because mom, you, you know, they birth them in the natural, and most of the time they're birthing in the spirit for them. And so pray and never stop praying. It's important because, you know, I know many, many, of course, mothers and grandmothers who have prayed their children into God's kingdom. Always, yes. We see the pain sometimes when we look at young people, of course, we see them on the streets. We know that they're involved in drugs. And, of course, we can go on into a negative. But there's so much positive things because talk about our young people. We see where God raised up a generation, a Joshua generation. That's right. That's and right. God is raising up people like Joshua That's who can right. take the mantle and they can yes. run and Amen. they can run this race. Uh, tell us about young people that you have been involved in Amen. and that. Uh, well, even, you know, around the world, but even in my own, my own son, who around the age of 16 just took off and just went down a road that was not good and lived a rebellious lifestyle for around 10 years. But during those 10 years, I stood on the word. I didn't stand on what the situation was telling me or what my emotions or my fear. And that's the biggest thing, I think, as a parent, when you see your child being a prodigal, it's the fear that tries to grip your heart. But there was a scripture that I always stood on in Proverbs that said, don't set your heart on your seed's destruction. One translation said, don't be a willing party to his death, meaning I was not going to come into agreement with destruction for my son. I was going to come into agreement with what God's promises said. And I stood on those promises till, till everyone else was fulfilled in his life. And that's what we're talking about this morning. People have to stand up on the word of God Amen. and believe in God for their sons and daughters' yes, breakthrough yes, and their yes, deliverance yes, and healing. Yes. Sometimes we act to what they are going through, don't we? Right. We speak negative things exactly. in their lives and we exactly. declare death over them. So what yes. we are saying this morning is that we have to speak yes. life over them. Yes, yes. You know, because David said in Psalm 139, around verse 15, he said, before, and he's speaking for God, before I formed you, in your mother's womb. I wrote a book about you. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I've got great plans for you. Jeremiah 1 said, I called you as a prophet to the nations while in the womb. God has a destined purpose for each one on this earth. But so often 
and we know who he is, the thief that comes to steal. What I say is we have a big identity crisis in the society, and they need to know who they are in Christ so that their identity cannot be taken from them. But we are up against such technology these days. We of are. course, you know, we have Facebook, we have Twitter, we have yes, Instagram, yes, yes. we have the whole social media. Yes. And, you, and you, of course, and you're talking about identity. Sometimes yes. they don't know who they are in they Christ. They don't know. They don't know. Yes. Oh, and it's important for us to see. I always encourage parents, you know, you know, you know, we say our children doesn't want to go to church or come to Sunday right. school. I say, right. listen to me, once they're in your home, it is your responsibility to teach them right. and to bring them. They can't rule yes. you. Yes. And we have, we, in fact, we have a whole generation. We look at today, you know, a whole generation of rebellious. Yes. And when I mean rebellious, yes. you know, they are rebelling against yes. what the value system is today. Yes. And I'm saying that because we have that that spirit of rebellion, we have a dysfunctional family. Right. Then we have dysfunctional schools. Exactly. It affects, you know, exactly. and I think I mentioned the last time, you know, uh, we did talk about in the U.S. where they took prayer out of the schools. Right, right, right. But in the past couple of weeks, we have been hearing, of course, prayer went back into the schools. Well, <laughs> it trouble, it, you know, pressure causes people to pray, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. But children are so important because when we shape and we, and we, and we, and we speak into their lives at a very tender age, uh, we can lose our generation if we don't yes. really build them, yes. build on God's word. Yes. I'm thinking of, of Timothy as a young man where, Amen. you know, God used Timothy. And Timothy, he spoke about his grandmother and exactly. his mother, the yes. faith. that generation. How is it important, yes. how is it important for us as, as parents to, to, to teach our children the word of God? Very important. Again, the foundation you give them, no matter what storm comes to them outwardly, that foundation of God and that foundation. And, you know, I find another thing too is, we, we have to know what God's Word says for that child, and we have to keep speaking it. We have to stand in the gap. We have to pray and believe for them. And, you know, we look at the Scripture in Joel 2 and also Acts 2 that yes. God says in the last days, I'm going to pour out my Spirit. And He begins to tell us what our sons and daughters will do. Well, we got to know when God has spoken that, the enemy's going to make sure that he does everything to distract them and keep them from being in that place with God because he don't want God's spirit poured out on them. You know, but again, the word of God and praying and standing on this word and having done all stand there for and just keep prophesying. You know, it doesn't take a prophet to prophesy. We, when we speak God's word over that situation, that is us prophesying God's fulfillment over that life. And so you stand for that child and, and you speak that that child God gave you. You know, as you write in Psalm 127, there that heritage God has given us. And we stand and we fight for them and we stand in the gap and we push back darkness and we continue to speak God's word over that child. And of course, you're correct. As we push back darkness, you know, I see so many young people today, of course, they are caught up in other demonic forces, strong yes. in their life. Yes. I'm yes. seeing that because sometimes, you know, they're involved in witchcraft and all right. these other witchy right. boards and, right. and stuff that right. it goes into the schools right. and they come back home and the parents doesn't have a clue what is happening exactly. to them. Exactly. And of course, so you're correct, if we pray over them, even where they sleep, I do their that. school books, you know, I'm telling <laughs> book bags. I, we got to get radical. The <laughs> enemy is radical and he's, uh, you know, passionate in their destruction. So we've got to get us radical and passionate for their, you know, good. And, and so I would, you know, the Holy Spirit will guide us. James says, if we lack wisdom, let us ask. And, and in raising children, and especially in this society, we've got to have wisdom. We've got to know how to pray. And, and most of the time, moms, I know, and, and dads too, I don't want to leave dads out because I know you dads are standing in the gap. You are praying for that child also. Um, but I, I look at that scripture in Romans 8, 26, that says, we in our human weakness, we really don't know what to pray, but the spirit will make perfect intercession with groanings. And sometimes mom and dads, we, we look at that child, we look at that situation, and it just creates a groan within us. There's not even words sometimes, you know, pastor, even in any area we pray about, but there's just, especially over that child, we just, we groan, just like we groan to, to give birth to them. We groan for their spiritual birth. But I love that because the Holy Spirit will take that groan. Yes. You know, you think of that, a groan, you know, you think, I, 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 no I have no words. No words. <laughs> I just, oh, that, that cry, that groan. But yet we have the promise that the Holy Spirit takes that groan and it makes perfect intercession to the Father. It, it, it's that, 
you know, if I'm in China and I'm speaking a foreign language, I don't know what to speak, so I have a translator. So the Holy Spirit is our prayer translator. He will take those groans and he will pray the perfect will of the Father for that child. Listen, friends, we don't know what your groans are this morning, but we know for sure that you're running for your children, yes. for your loved ones, the pain that you're facing and the pain that you're going through. I'm going to agree yes, with, yes. in prayer this morning you, for Jesus. your loved ones. I, I'm going to agree Jesus. for your breakthrough, for Thank your deliverance. You, Father, Father, we pray for our children Jesus, right now. God, right now Father, right now we ask you, Jesus, Lord, God, that you would stretch you, forth your hands and bring wholeness Jesus. and healing to families, Thank to Jesus. children, Thank that they'll be... Jesus. That there'll be a, a great yes. breakthrough, yes, Father, Jesus. that they have never yes, experienced Jesus. before, we Father. Touch them we in their spirit, great. in their minds we even right great. now. So you have a minute to pray. Go ahead. Yes, yes. Lord, uh, this morning and my uh, scriptures and my prayers was Jeremiah 31. And I want to speak to you out there. Thus saith the Lord, refrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears. Your work, your labor of prayer is yes. going to be rewarded, says the Lord. They will come back. Those children are going to come back from the land of the enemy. He goes on in verse 17. There is hope in your future, says the Lord. And listen, we're going to stand on this today, that your children will come back to their border. We know the prodigal son, he came to the end of himself. He realized it's better at the father's house. We are praying, we are believing this is the day, this is the hour. Yes. The prodigals are coming home in Jesus' name. Amen. And Thank we agree you, for you right now this morning, Thank like the prodigal son and daughter, that yes, we are going to yes, come back home. Yes. We are believing God for restoration, Thank for you, healing, Jesus. and also for reconciliation. Yes. So yes. we ask you to continue to call the numbers Thank on the screen. Let us know, of course, give us some testimonies. Send the names of your children. We would love to pray for them. We will keep them on a, on a, a database. So we know that you have been crying out. And of course, just like Sue said, the groans that you have, yes. that you have groaned. Yes. There are no words. You're so tired and you're groaning and you're saying, oh God, breakthrough. I need a breakthrough. Listen, Sue, it was nice having you again this morning. Thank you. We Pastor. appreciate your ministry. Thank you. Thank you. And especially, of course, your ministry in Trinidad yes. and Tobago. Yes. I see you still have your flag yeah. here. Oh, yes. Us. Always. Always. Flag. That's my point of contact. <laughs> Even because when I'm here, I love to touch and pray yes. and agree with the people. But when I'm 10,000 miles away, I take this flag as a point of contact. God sees and knows every need, and He is moving in Trinidad. Yes. Friends, our time has already gone. Listen, we are so glad to have you join with us. I am your host, Dr. Victor Jogi, Senior Pastor of the End Time Harvest Ministries and Senior Pastor of the Living Work Christian Center. Remember, have a great day, and God richly bless you and your children.